welcome back. Today is, um, today's Monday, November 4th. I think it's important to say the date because I often don't get these videos out and published on YouTube until a day or two, sometimes even a week after I record them. So it's been, I think, about a month since I recorded last and things have been crazy here. We were well on our way to the, the baby sleeping through the night. Um, she was waking up like once a night, every other night or every two nights or so. And it was great. We were starting to get into a rhythm. And then we went on vacation. Which, usually when we go on vacation, I feel very refreshed and it fills my cup. But this one was hard. It sort of kicked off this thing with my baby where she started waking up every like 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, and sometimes she would stay up for like an hour after she woke up. And that's been something that we've been dealing with ever since, though we're starting to get back into, um, I don't know, some kind of rhythm that is making us feel a little bit more well-rested. It's a little bit more sustainable. I think part of it's just that she's at an age where object permanence becomes a thing. I don't know, there's all kinds of theories. Uh, needless to say, uh, it's been kind of rough and, um, Add that to the fact that we took my oldest daughter out of preschool and are now homeschooling, um, which for us just means lots of reading out loud and playtime and outdoor time. I am in the process of basically trying to just structure our days, both for me and for her, and um, it's been an adjustment period. <laughs> so, yeah. It's been kind of a month, but I'm very happy to be in front of the camera and talking to you today. It's been a cooperative effort with everyone in my family to make this happen right now, so I don't take it for granted. And I know it will continue to get easier, but for now I'm going to do just a short episode just to kind of flex my podcasting muscles and um, keep in touch. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So my first finished object are the sewing two mitts by Ronha Hakaleto. By the way, if I am pronouncing a name wrong, I very much appreciate when people give me the phonetic pronunciation in the comments. Um, yeah, I just want to put that out there because I know some people are kind of timid about that, but I very much appreciate it. These are the mitts and they are beautiful. And these mitts are made using some local BFL hand spun that was given to me by my sister-in-law. She spun the yarn and she gave me this as a gift for my last birthday. And it's really beautiful yarn. It's um, got some thick and thin quality to it. It knits up kind of like a DK. She said that I could dye it, but I love neutrals and I didn't want to dye it, so. I left it as is, but anyway, these are very uh, cozy mitts. I love them. It was a meditative stitch pattern, and um, I've been wearing the heck out of these. And I just followed the pattern as is. Um, one of them is slightly bigger than the other, just because the uh, hand spun has got um, thick and thin, but it, when you put them on, it's barely perceptible, and I love them. I've been wearing them constantly. Somebody asked me if you can knit using fingerless mitts. And I don't know about every knitting style, but for me, I totally can. I just have to be careful about not sticking the needle into my palm. Um, but yeah, after I was done knitting these, I had quite a bit of yarn left over. So I just made really, really simple leg warmers for my baby. I cast it on 40 stitches. This is um, one by one rib to make it as stretchy as possible. And I knit a tube uh, about six, seven inches, cast it off, and there you go, leg warmers. And we've been using these for her nonstop too because um, 
it's cold here now and she if she's not wearing leggings like I have a pair of uh, bib overalls that I put her in all the time and those tend to kind of ride up and she's always got her little shins and ankles kind of exposed even if she's wearing socks and shoes so but this is a great way to keep uh, some of those bits of leg that like to see exposure covered and it helps add a little extra layer of warmth when she's wearing leggings and um, I still have about I don't know I still have quite a bit of the hand spun left over so I'm thinking I'll make maybe a little pair of fingerless mitts or maybe just not fingerless mitts but actual mittens for her to wear as well so it'll be like a matching set. I have a very small collection of hand spun that I've um, been accumulating uh, from very generous spinners who have gifted it to me. It's really hard for me to Oh, you know, to crack into it because I feel like it's so special and I love just seeing it displayed in my on my yarn shelf, you know. I find if I put it somewhere where I can see it, then usually an idea will come to me for how to use it in like the perfect way. And um, so I try to wait for that inspiration, but I don't know, I think it's so special to be given hand spun from spinners. It's such beautiful yarn. It's different than anything you can get commercially. Um, and spinning isn't something that I was ever all that interested in learning, even though I am very much in love with hand spun yarn and um, I very much admire spinners and what they can do. There are so many things I wanna learn <laughs> and I just, I'm struggling to find the time so for whatever reason I've just put it as something that is probably not going to get done um, but the more I see and work with hand spun the more I find myself tempted to learn how to how to spin myself so um, I don't think that I would be much for drop spindles but maybe someday I'll get a, a spinning wheel I think that if I had a spinning wheel then I wouldn't be able to help myself. I'd just have to figure it out. So, and it, yeah, it would be worth learning. So bit by bit, I am wrapping my head around the idea of becoming a spinner, maybe someday. <laughs> So I have one work in progress to share today and it is the Tamarack sweater by um, Brooklyn Tweet, I guess Jared Flood. Um, and I think in the last video I had knit one sleeve or was working on one sleeve. So I finished that sleeve, here, a little brighter, I finished that sleeve. And then I finished the second sleeve. And now I am, I'm getting pretty close on the body to where I'm gonna need to connect the sleeves and continue knitting. It's a pretty long sweater. On the model, it hits mid thigh. I'm not totally sure we're gonna go that long. I don't know, my husband's a pretty tall guy. Um, but, this sweater seems quite tall. We might go just a smidge higher than that. I I did do one thing different. Um, like most Brooklyn Tweed patterns, it calls for a tubular cast on with the sleeves and the, um, the bottom of the sweater, but I just wasn't in the mood for that <laughs> uh, this time around. So I just went ahead and did your standard cast on and I think it still looks really nice. And the directions do say, if you don't wanna do the tubular just, do, just start with the ribbing and it kind of tells you, it walks you through that process and so it's no mystery, it's no, it's not hard to figure out or anything. Um, but I still think it looks really nice and I mean obviously tubular would look cleaner and more professional but um, I'm not bothered and I just, I just didn't have the brain space for it because I don't know how to do tubular cast on without like looking it up and um, I just didn't want to. I just wanted to knit. I did think that this knit was going to go a little bit faster than it's been going because Query is a bulky yarn. 
but I forgot it's moss stitch. Basically any stitch that requires that I alternate knits and purls constantly is going to take me twice as long than anything garter or stockinette or even just purling. So, but I've, um, I've worked with this yarn before. I used it in a pullover that I made myself recently and I still had a couple of these balls left over. And so when I started looking up patterns for my husband's birthday sweater, which has come and gone, by the way. So now it's a birthday sweater for Christmas. So when I was looking at patterns, I gave my husband a couple choices of things I thought he might like, and he chose this one, and turns out he really likes this color of yarn. So I only had to order um, a few skeins of it rather than the whole quantity of it. So yeah, we're making progress on that. I mentioned this on Instagram but it's been really slow progress but no matter what the situation is during the day and how crazy things get we do try to find a couple minutes to decompress after the kids go to bed spend a little time together and lately we've been watching um talisman again if you feel inclined to give me the phonetic pronunciation um in the comments then please do but um, we've been watching vlogs on off-grid living by these people, and they're so relaxing. And it makes me want to get out of the suburbs so badly, which is in our future, but not anytime soon. Though I am starting to go a little bit crazy. Anyway, that's my work in progress. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> So my natural dyeing experiments have kind of slowed down because that's just what happens whenever I go on vacation. I put everything away and then it takes me a while to kind of get things going again after I get back. But but I have um, repeated an experiment that I did last month that um, kind of resulted in the same thing. So I thought it'd be worth sharing. Um, I believe in one of the prior episodes I shared about some yarn that I dyed with hibiscus. The yarn was a silk merino blend. I was trying to achieve those greens and blues from hibiscus that people have been getting. Um, I didn't get that, I got kind of a, a pink color. Um, but when I over dyed it with matter later, I got a really, really pretty rust color, which was kind of surprising to me because I would have thought that dyeing uh, yarn that had turned kind of pinkish with matter would have resulted in more of a, I don't know, a warm red. But um, in this case, the results repeated themselves and I got this kind of rusty color. And I can't remember, I'll have to look at my notes, but I can't remember if there was some walnut in, involved in this or not. But, um, and rust is kind of one of those coveted fall colors. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting, but I wonder if there's some kind of uh, chemical reaction or some kind of reason that uh, when you dye, when you over dye hibiscus with matter, you get rust. It's just, it was kind of a surprising result. And it's something that I want to remember for the future because personally, I, I really love rust colored anything. So the natural dye knit along is still going strong. Um, it will continue to go until June 21st, 2020. So it started on the first day of summer last year and it's going to end on the first day of summer next year. Uh, it's a year long knit along. We wanted to make sure that everybody had plenty of time, plenty of opportunity and plenty of access to whatever dye resources they wanted. And it's been really cool, as usual, to see all the finished objects that have been coming through. One thing I did want to note is that I've noticed on Instagram, there have been some people who have been using the hashtag for the previous year, which was natural dye K-A-L and natural dye K-A-L-F-O for finished objects. But um, you want to make sure if you're sharing your finished objects, especially, because I'll still see the um, all the hashtags, but you want to make sure that you're using the natural dye M-A-L 
hashtag for just the general sharing and natural dye m-a-l-f-o for when you're posting your finished objects and this only applies to instagram because ravelry has their own threads um that way you can be eligible for winning the prize because I'm going to be pulling from the hashtag. Um, I just wanted to put that out there because I've noticed it happening with a couple different, um, it's happened more than once over the past couple months. So, um, and I will try to send you a message or whatever if I see that happening. Um, but I've been very scatterbrained lately. So, um, I just wanted to put that out here, here as well. So I'm kind of running out of time now. Daylight savings time was yesterday. And that means that it gets dark here really early. My husband has some stuff he has to do, so I have to wrap up as soon as possible. Which is a bummer, because I have so much I want to talk about. But the last thing that I want to talk about today is this little ornament kit that I was sent by Amber of Maker's Haven. Um, she has recently expanded her shop to include lots and lots of different kinds of things for makers. Um, she was selling yarn before, but now she's selling all different kinds of things. I've taken a look at her shop and all this stuff is really cute. It is indeed a haven for makers. So anyway, a couple months ago, she asked if I would be interested in trying out one of the products from her shop and I was all about it. So what she ended up sending to me was this little um, cross stitch ornament kit. Comes in this bag. And it comes with four, um, four of these wooden cross stitch ornaments with little copper rings. And each kit comes with a selection of three different colors of um, velvet ribbon. And I think there are different color selections for this ribbon. Um, this is just the one that I chose. But you just use this ribbon to loop into the copper hoop right there and then you can hang it on whatever you want to hang it on. And then of course the kit comes with a two pack of needles. I've been having a lot of fun with experimenting with these. I've never done cross stitch before but it's something I've been wanting to try and I have no idea what I'm doing but I'm just playing around. So first I uh, got out my embroidery thread which um, I've had this for years back when I was really dabbling with embroidery just a bunch of different colors um, and I was kind of playing around with this at first but I think traditional cross stitch I read somewhere that you're supposed to use two strands held together and for me that wasn't cutting it with the with the ornaments because I feel like the ornaments I feel like the holes are spaced a little further apart than most cross stitch but I don't know maybe they're not um, so then I ended up using more strands and then at some point I just thought I could just use fingering weight yarn. So I got out my <laughs> box of Christmas yarn, which if you remember from last year, I, um, I purchased all this yarn to make a bunch of these Christmas gnomes. This is one that isn't finished. It doesn't have its beard or nose or arms yet, but, um, yeah, so I still have a bunch of this yarn left. It's Knit Picks palette. Um, it's in all the heathered colors, Christmas colors. And I thought maybe this would work perfectly for these little embroidered ornaments. And I think it looks pretty good. I, I experimented first with making a little snowflake, which I think I'm gonna rip this out and kind of do it in a different way but uh, it's got potential. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that very well. Hold on. Maybe if I put something in the background. And then I also experimented with making a little Christmas tree. And I think this turned out better. 
And of course I am toying around with the idea of adding little Christmas lights, little twinkle lights on it, giving it a little trunk, maybe doing some snow. Um, yeah, not sure. But these two ornaments I did just freehand, just playing around. Um, but I've seen that you can go online and find free little Christmas motifs, uh, little patterns for that. So I might look that up. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with these. You can find these available in Amber's shop right now. I think that she opened shop in the beginning of November. And these are just a quick little handmade thing that you can do right in time for Christmas. Or it could even be a really neat Christmas gift to give someone on its own. So I just wanted to share that really quickly. And man, this was a short episode, but I gotta go. <laughs> but I'm really glad that I had a little time to record and chat with you guys today. And um, hopefully I will be back really soon with the next episode. I'll see you guys later.